cream rinse, and now we need to do the drying process. Um, usually with a big dog of the hair, I kind of hand squeegee him. I go down the legs and squeeze out the water and then squeeze out what I can. Uh, you may take up to three or four or five towels and dry on him. The more you towel dry, the less time you have to spend with the force dryer. Most dogs kind of like it when you get to this point because it's kind of relaxing and feels kind of good. And I think all dogs like it when they're groomed. They feel good. They get a better response from their owner. They smell nice. People want to hold them, hug them. And people, people ooh and awe over them and say, ooh, you look so pretty. <laughs> so to me, I think most dogs kind of like this. Uh, remember we put cotton balls, so I'm going to now remove these so I don't forget them. Oh, you stuck them around me. Did you get them? Okay. Now, um, this dog has really nice ears. They're nice and pink and very clean. Um, had he had a lot of debris in there, it could have been a sign of ear mites, which would be a black, flaky type of earwax that comes off and kind of looks like coffee grounds. If you see that, you need to see your vet. Um, if you have an odor coming out of there, you need to see your vet. But these dogs have ears that are open, so they don't tend to get infected like some of the drop breeds like a basset hound, say, that hangs down real heavy. So as a rule, I don't see a whole lot of these dogs with ear trouble. A lot of them like their face dry. Feels nice. Mm -hmm. Feels good. A lot of these dogs are from areas that have very cold weather. They developed a coat to keep them uh, warm, plus this dog to keep them waterproof. The purpose of the double coat is the guard hair is this, your long hair on the outside is your guard hair. And that is the hair that, you know, grows to a length and gives him his look. Then underneath that, out of the same double coat will grow um, hairs that are shorter and they're real fuzzy looking. They look like baby hair kind of, and they're real fuzzy. And that's what causes your matting, but that's your undercoat, and that's what causes the dog to cool or heat. And like in this winter time when the dog puts his full coat on and gets thicker, he's adding more undercoat to help him keep warm. Then he'll blow that coat out and shed it, and in that process, it'll all get matted unless you're brushing that out. So uh, hair is very seasonal. It tends to come on with weather changes and light changes. So because we keep so many of our dogs indoors, they don't get to shed out in a natural uh, time frame as a dog outside because they're in artificial light and artificial heat. Okay, now for us, because we're groomers, we have what's called a force dryer. It blows real loud, noisy air, but it, it's not warm. It's, it's kept, it, the, the, the uh, air comes out the temperature of the room, so it's not a heated dryer. Um, they do get a little bit of warmth, warmth to him because of the motor, but we use that and we blow this dog's hair. We'll get all the water off of him, so he won't be able to hear us now. <laughs> it's very loud. Most of the relax them. Most of them come around to it pretty good. I have had dogs that are very upset over that. I'll put them in a cage and dry them through a cage instead. You can use a box fan. Just use a box fan that you can buy at Kmart and Walmart and put it in front of a, uh, like a crate and put it on the dog and it'll help dry them. It's much slower than this process. But when we blow, we take it and we put this nozzle right onto the skin and this will actually bust up a lot of the matting. And sometimes when he starts getting dry, the hair will just fly all over in here because he's got all that coat coming out. And for a groomer, this speeds us up immensely because we're doing probably 10 or better dogs a day, so this will help speed us up. Okay? Yes, and when you're doing this, do not do it in the ear, in the eyes, around the face. Be really careful. If you're going to dry this area, cover the eyes and blow. But these things can actually tear really thin skin, so be really careful on that. Also, you know, in the private areas, the rectum area, don't blow that directly onto those. These are not very expensive. This one here, this unit I bought years ago was $350, but you can buy smaller units for around $100, and they're a really good investment for a person with this type of dog. You know, this dog has a large lifespan, so investing in one of those will actually save you grooming money if you get one of those. Instead of paying a groomer to do your dog twice, you can probably afford a dryer. And, and it does help, it helps with the shedding when you're going through the blowing part where he's blowing his coat. 
you can use that and get a lot of that hair out and it'll help you with the brushing. Me, I'm almost 50, so to me, the, the less I have to brush, the better now. My joints are starting to suffer some, so for me, this is the way to do it. In a grooming shop, we don't do a lot of pre-brushing because the dog is dirty and it doesn't brush as easily. So we, we usually stick the dog right in the tub and get into this step because it does remove a large amount. Plus, the dryer will straighten his hair. You'll see that they have a lot of wave to this kinky wave with the drying process, it'll help straighten that. And ideally, you want your coat to be straight. Especially when you're going to scissor anything, the straighter the hair is, the easier you can scissor, the better you scissor. So, okay. I'm going to hold him because he's a little stressed until we get him. Yeah.